In this video, we'll introduce the development tools you'll use to create your first application using the built-in project templates in your IDE. As you probably remember from XAM 101, in order to build Xamarin iOS applications, you'll need a Mac running the latest release version of Mac OS X. That Mac will need the latest release version of Xcode and the Xamarin tools installed on it. Let's talk briefly about what's installed with the Xamarin tools. Xamarin iOS includes both compile time and runtime components. First, we have a cross-platform C-Sharp compiler that's fully compliant with the latest C-Sharp specifications. This is used specifically on the Mac. Visual Studio uses Microsoft C-Sharp compiler. An optimizing native code compiler and linker, which is used to create the native code that Apple's tools will expect to work with. A runtime engine, which will provide type checking, static reflection, interop, and garbage collection services to your app. This runtime engine also includes the runtime binding definitions for all of the released iOS APIs. And finally, the runtime includes a subset of the .NET Framework class libraries. These are based on the shipped 4.5 assemblies from Microsoft. This includes features like Link, Tasks, XML, Regex, IO, and Networking APIs. You have two IDE choices available. For Windows users, there is support for Visual Studio 2012 and up. And with Visual Studio 2015 and up, you can install Xamarin right from the Visual Studio installer. Still, you'll need a Mac with OS X, Xcode, and the Xamarin tools to use as a build host. For Mac users, there's Visual Studio for Mac. For both IDEs, we recommend you run on Stable Channel and stay up to date. Now that we've gone through the tools, let's start talking about a new application. No matter which IDE you decide to use, your application adventure will begin with File, New Project. Both IDEs have a set of installed project templates to create iOS applications in a few different styles. And the app creation experience is a little different between them. You will be creating an app in a moment, and the lab exercise will walk you through either IDE. But first, let's talk about the project styles you can start with. The first project style is the single view application. This is the simplest application template and the one we'll be using today. It creates the app structure with a single empty page declared in a designer file ready for you to add controls to. Many applications start with this template. The second template is the master detail app. This creates an application with two views. The master view, which is a list of scrollable records, each one representing some piece of data, and the detail view for a single record. Apps such as mail, reminders, and contacts all use this template. This template also supports a combined master detail view on tablets in landscape mode. For data-driven apps like email or tasks, this is a great template to start with. We covered this template in more detail in iOS 205, our Navigation Patterns course. Next, we have the page-based app. This creates a single screen application that lets you swipe through different pages of information, sort of like a book. If you're looking to build an app where the screen remains consistent, but you're swiping through pages of related information, this is a great starting point. Next up, we have the WebView app. This template creates a hybrid app which hosts an HTML WebView control. The content is shipped locally with the app as ASP.NET Razor pages. This is a good choice if you already have a significant investment in HTML and CSS, but you need a native app. The last template choice is the tabbed app template. This template creates a multi-page application where each page is a tab with a button representing it on the bottom of the screen. The built-in phone app on iOS uses this paradigm. If you're building an app with multiple distinct pages that may or may not have relationships, this is probably the template for you. As with many of the others, we cover this template in more detail in the iOS 205 Navigation Patterns course. Once you've created your project, you can build it. To compile your code, you'll use the same technique you would for any other app the Run button on the toolbar, the Build menu, or the Accelerator key for the hardcore developers. Build warnings and errors will be reported through the error window, which you can turn on and off through the View menu. You have a couple of options when testing your application. The first is the iPhone Simulator. This is a Mac-only tool supplied with Xcode, and it simulates an iOS environment on the Mac. You can select from different form factors directly from the toolbar, and you can download older versions of iOS using Xcode. You must have remote desktop access to your build host if you're using Visual Studio on Windows. Your next option is to use a physical device. You can connect an iDevice to your Mac with a USB cable, and both IDEs will be able to detect it. 
You need to select the iPhone build configuration in Visual Studio to create a native AOT package. Xamarin will automatically select the proper configuration based on the device you're deploying to. Running on a physical device is actually a great way to test your app. You should always do this during your development cycle just due to runtime differences, but it does require some setup. First, apps must be signed with an Apple supplied certificate. Devices must be registered with the Apple Developer Portal. Thank you.